for absolutely no good reason. I decided to build this little SI5351A synthesizer. There's one printed circuit board and the small integrated circuit, the surface mount part, has been installed. That's the synthesizer kit. Now there's an option with this to provide a TCXO. I'm not going to do that. Supplied with the uh, basement model kit is a 27 megahertz clock crystal. There's three three terminal devices. The crystal. Looks like six resistors, two headers, and three little ceramic capacitors. I'm going to be using the Heiko soldering iron and I'll uh, be using this solder. You see it's uh, 6337, a lead bearing solder and it's uh, 25 thousandths in diameter. Typical of these QRP labs kits, we've got a rather thorough set of instructions five pages long and I'll be using this as a guide for construction. The resistors are installed hairpin style which means one of the leads is bent down parallel with the other. Now this, I'm referring to the uh, schematic, this is R6, a 560 ohm resistor. Looking on the board, we can see R6 is right here. It installs here. I'll bend the legs outward and I'll, I'll solder these two terminals. I'm going to hold the uh, circuit board in my stick vise. Stick vise is a trade name, you can Google it. And once it's adjusted for the board, and that's done with this, then the board can be inserted and removed just by compressing the springs. Some of these components are uh, on tape for real machines. The easiest way to get rid of the tape is to cut the leads. That way there's no sticky stuff from the tape left on the leads. Here are all the resistors.
And here's the board with the uh, capacitors and crystal installed. So far, these are all unpolarized components. That means I could have installed the crystal the other way around or any of the capacitors or resistors. The only thing left is the headers and the three terminal devices. Now, one of them is a uh, adjustable voltage regulator. The adjustment is set by two of the resistors. I believe up here, maybe. And uh, the other two are MOSFETs. They apparently buffer the output. Now here's one of the three terminal devices. And you see it's a semicircle with a flat on it and of course three holes. Here is one of the three terminal devices and you can see it's circular and flat with three wires coming up. White wires need to be bent a little bit. It's then assembled like this. Now, of the three terminal regulators, this one is the odd marked one. The other two are identical and go here and here. This is a voltage regulator. These are the buffering transistors. Here's the board with all the components mounted. The only two things left are these 10 pin headers. And while all of the components were soldered on this side, the headers will be soldered on this side because the headers install this way. So they'll be soldered on top. My preferred way of holding these headers was with a pair of uh, forceps. Once the two end pins are soldered, and I've removed this pin, now I'm working off of this enlarged photograph, and this pin is not supposed to be there. And here we are done. The photograph doesn't seem to ha show these pads for the TCXO. But all the rest of the components are just like they're shown in the photograph. So in addition to the photograph, the schematic contains all the part numbers and values. IC2, LM317LZ. See what I mean? They're all marked. So with the picture and the uh, schematic, you should be in good shape. So that completes that little board.
This is the frequency synthesizer board that will plug into the uh, display module. And we'll assemble that next.